Welcome to another edition of Northern Heat. And this week, we're very honored with our special guest, Mr. Frank McKenna. Welcome to our show, Frank. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me. So on the weekend, I decided that I would uh, go and, and, and Google your name and uh, get a little bit of, uh, of history behind. I knew some of it, but I didn't know it all. And through there, I've seen that, uh, you know, you've uh, started off with a law degree. You got into politics. You end up being the premier of New Brunswick for a number of years. And uh, then you became uh, the Canadian ambassador in, uh, in uh, the U.S., and now you're uh, involved in a number of, uh, of different uh, boards and, and so on and so forth and different businesses. You know, all I can say to that when I was reading that was, wow, you're from New Brunswick. <laughs> so that was amazing. And so, you know, <clears throat> through that, you know, you have built a substantial network of people that you've, you've met from all over the world, from presidents and so on and so forth when I, when I looked at that. And again, you still end up supporting New Brunswickers. You're, you're uh, uh, involved still very strongly in the province of New Brunswick. There's a lot of, of things that I see that you're involved in. My question to you, when you're able to connect and be anywhere in the world, why New Brunswick? <clears throat> well, very simply, Robert, New Brunswick's home. And uh, everything that I have in my life, I owe to New Brunswick. And, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very conscious of that. I, I grew up in a family of 10 on a small farm near Appahawk, New Brunswick. And uh, uh, for the most part, we had the arse out of our pants and uh, lived off hand-me-downs and had enough food because we lived on a farm, but no more. And uh, I was able to go from that uh, uh, to become educated and become a lawyer and, and the other things that you've talked about. Um, and the province supported me every step of the way, quite frankly, and put confidence in me and uh, allowed, um, allowed good things to happen in my life. And I'm, I'm conscious of how lucky I've been, and, uh, and, and all of it is due to New Brunswick, New Brunswick supporting me, New Brunswick lifting me, carrying me. And so uh, my, I, I've pledged to my family that everything that we do is going to be dedicated to New Brunswick. And, it's not a coincidence that uh, when COVID hit, uh, the uh, rabbit hole we had it for was New Brunswick. And uh, we've been there for the last 18 months. And normally we, we would be there for six months of the year, let's say. But um, lately we've been there full time. And uh, I love the winters as much as I love the summers. Um, and we've got a spectacular circle of friends and family um, that we feel close to. And we feel safe and secure and loved in New Brunswick. And New Brunswick's our home. Well, you know, when, when you talk about that safe and secure and, and uh, through COVID, that's what ended up with a lot of people. You know, we, we felt safer and, and secure here and, and people migrated. And it's been one of those things that I had a, a, uh, an interview with David Alston at one point in time. And, and David told me, he said that one of the things through COVID is that it has allowed New Brunswick to step up to the plate and to be on an equal terms with the rest of the world on, on how we could uh, we could play. And so that kind of ties into the second question I have for you that just recently you've donated money to UNB. Uh, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about that, but more so on, on the fact of, of what's your vision of, of that donation and what they're going to do at UNB with it and where that goes into your vision. Yeah. Well, to start with, uh, it, let me shout out David Alston. Um, he's he's one of those New Brunswickers who believe in paying it forward, and uh, he's been successful. Uh, and he's used that success to create Brilliant Labs, which is in schools all across New Brunswick, and helping to create uh, a digital revolution. Um, and uh, and there are lots uh, like David and uh, and others uh, across the province that deserve uh, credit for their loyalty to the province. Look, in my case, um, I wanted to try to do something that was transformational that would really make a difference in the province. And I've looked at a lot of different opportunities and I've waited. Um, and all, all of a sudden, serendipity uh, came in the form of the pandemic. And uh, the pandemic revealed a number of things to a lot of us. One, that we had a, a very uh, privileged quality of life here that, that uh, 
that we were uh, a province of people who respected authority and respected each other and wanted uh, safe communities for each other, uh, that we had an affordable cost of living, and that, um, and that geography no longer became a disadvantage. In fact, it became an advantage because people uh, could come to New Brunswick or, or be from New Brunswick and live securely and work remotely. And you could have access to some of the most challenging jobs in the world from New Brunswick. Uh, to give you an example, uh, we moved uh, a, a major operation in TD insurance into New Brunswick just in the last year. And we're, um, we, we are anchored in, uh, at our center in Moncton where we have over a thousand people working in various uh, parts of the TD uh, business. But in the case of insurance, we're basically saying to anybody across New Brunswick, particularly Francophones in Northern New Brunswick, if you wanna work from your community, from your home, we have a job for you. Uh, we need to hire hundreds of people. So uh, this, this, this turns our world on its, on its head. Uh, this allows people access to work anywhere. So I wanted to take all of that, those ingredients uh, and put them together with one other thing that, um, that has slipped by us a bit unnoticed. And that's that we actually are quite a technology powerhouse. And, and it really came to my attention when, uh, um, when the book was written, uh, uh, Unicorn in the Woods, which talks about the, the number of large technology companies that have been spawned in New Brunswick. Uh, Gordon Pitt wrote the book and, and it revealed that there are a lot of em embers burning across the province in the technology ecosystem. So what I wanted to do was to try to connect all of those things together. And uh, so I'm, uh, I'm pledged to raise $50 million at UNB, uh, and I'm starting with $5 million of our own um, in order to create a digital transformation in New Brunswick. And uh, I don't want people to be alarmed by the word digital. All that really means is introducing innovation uh, in all of its forms in New Brunswick. So it could mean that a B&B &B that uh, is getting along okay now, it needs an online reservation system. It could be that a farmer needs uh, a, a bit of uh, software in order to manage his inventory. Uh, it, it means that somebody who's running a kayaking outdoor business needs a website. Uh, those are at, at, at the most elementary tools. And then you get into machine learning, AI, you get into data science, and you could get into cloud computing or quantum computing, all of these other uh, elements. But um, we've built some great success stories in New Brunswick. Uh, companies that are employing thousands of people. Uh, we've created some great uh, subject matter uh, success stories like cybersecurity, where there's almost 5,000 people working in businesses spawned out of our expertise uh, at UNB in cybersecurity. And I want to build on that and create literally dozens more models of success, more companies, more business, more talent coming out of the university, more innovation, more young people from the school system going in uh, to these technical areas, um, creating a province that can take advantage of its current geography and, uh, and reputation and, uh, and, and, and create uh, an enormous amount of wealth and prosperity for everybody. So it sounds overly ambitious and maybe even a little Pollyannish, but, uh, but I, I truly believe that our moment has come. And, uh, and I'm trying to, help create the tools that will allow us to take advantage of that moment. Well, New Brunswickers aren't the type of people that want to boast about what we have. And so we're very quiet. You know, we don't talk about that kind of stuff, but you're absolutely right. We have some amazing stories to tell and some amazing companies that have come out of this province and what they can, they're able to do. So in that vision that you have, I don't think that it's that far fetched. And I think that uh, everybody has a part to play. How do you see people like myself right, and, and people that might not be as much into uh, technology as, uh, as you're talking about, but how can you see us help you reach that vision? Well, in your case, just keep doing what you're doing. I mean, you produce value-added products that have a market all over the world. Um, but I want people across New Brunswick to become believers. And uh, I'm, I'm speaking to people who live in rural New Brunswick and northern New Brunswick, Francophones, Anglophones, uh, Aboriginals. I, I believe that uh, technology now can shrink the province, shrink the world 
in a way that can allow us all to have access to, uh, to prosperity. And that's part of what we're going to be doing is, is trying to bring digital tools to rural New Brunswick, uh, to First Nations communities, um, so that everybody will have the most basic abilities to operate a computer and, and to be able to use that and some of the products that are available to, uh, to have more productive businesses or more productive lives. And I, I would like people in New Brunswick to have the confidence to step up and embrace, uh, embrace this new world. Our rates of adoption of technology are very low compared to the rest of the country. And we, we tend to be reticent. We tend to be uh, a bit bashful about our abilities and our accomplishments. I'm, I'm saying to you and others like you, get your swagger back. Um, you know, we can do it right here and, uh, and we've proved that we can do it. So let's get at it. Well, you're absolutely right. You know, build the confidence. And I think that, uh, if we can, uh, we can all do it. It just, uh, it's a switching in the, uh, in the mind of being able to say we can, or we can't. And it's a decision that each individual makes up on their own. And, uh, I think that, uh, it's well started, uh, appreciate the fact and, and, if I can speak on the behalf of all New Brunswickers, thank you very much for your knowledge, for your helping out and giving us a kick in the ass of, of saying, get out there and you can do it and make it happen. And, and you're absolutely right. The world has shrunk and we need to be able to boast a little bit about who we are. Thank you, Robert. You know, uh, I, no person can do this individually, but collectively we can create a heck of a buzz around the province and, uh, and, uh, and, and just to everybody listening, uh, uh, here's our moment, walk out the plank a little bit and, uh, and be prepared to jump. Uh, you know, <laughs> there, 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 there's an old saying that, uh, that if, if you take the leap, the net will find you. And I firmly believe that the net will find us. I will keep that in mind going forward in my business and what I do. And I'll pass that message on to as many people as I can along with this uh, this show that we do this. Thank you very much. Very honored to the fact that you've accepted to do this. And uh, we'll try to get this out to as many people as we can and pass on that message. So again, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you very much for the work that you're doing for the province and for the fact that you are a great model of showing of where and how New Brunswickers can move up in the world and be known all over the world. Thank you, Robert. There we are, another edition of Northern Heat for this week, the place where you come to hear the stories that haven't been discovered yet.